Hello my happy readers, it's Shed Time Stories with Izzy. We are reading The Magical Advent Calendar, written by Fiona Simpson Stover. Now, it's the 12th of December, which means it's day 12. Are you ready to turn the page? The Magical Advent Calendar, day 12. <laughs> Ira, come on, hurry up. You're late for school, sweetheart. Ira jumped out of bed. She threw on her clothes and she ran downstairs, still half packing her school bag. Oh, mummy, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be late for school. I just wanted to have five more minutes. Ira's mummy was already stressed to the high heavens. She obviously had a lot to do today. And Ira, oversleeping, was not helping her. You know, Ira, you're old enough. It shouldn't be my responsibility to have to make sure you're up now. You're making me late for work and we're all running behind. It just makes the day so stressful. I've got a lot to do. I'm trying to prepare for Christmas. Soon you'll be breaking up from school. Daddy and I will be breaking up from work. And I've still got all the shopping to do. Ira just put her shoes and coat and scarf on and off she went to school. She felt awful. She hadn't done it on purpose. As she walked down her street, she heard a little tweeting noise. She looked around but couldn't see anything. She walked further and the tweeting continued. What is that? She thought to herself. Then she remembered. It is the 12th of December. At that exact moment, on a little bush in front of her was a little robin redbreast. She was overcome with a beautiful feeling of love and warmth. It may have been a coincidence, but she didn't care. She still felt very sad but she could feel her sadness slowly starting to lift. The robin was trying to steal the berries off the bush and Ira stood for a few seconds just watching the beauty of nature. I bet that robin isn't stressed. He just takes everything in his stride, she thought to herself. Suddenly, Ira snapped out of her daydream as she heard Kate's voice. The two girls walked together to school. As she was walking to school, Ira was very quiet. Kate asked her if everything was okay, but she just said, yes, I have just annoyed mum this morning. I slept in and she was stressed and she didn't have enough time and then I made it worse. Don't worry, Ira happens to us all. Your mummy didn't mean it. She was just stressed. Really? Ira just carried on walking. She remembered the robin. He wasn't stressed. Oh no! What's the matter, Ira? Kate asked, reacting to Ira's comment. Oh, nothing. Just something else I forgot this morning. Ira was really frustrated because she hadn't had time to open her advent calendar. The day really dragged on. Lessons were boring, the teachers were boring, and the day just wouldn't end. All Ira wanted to do was to get home to her calendar. The school bell rang at last for the end of the day. As Ira was packing her school bag, her teacher shouted, Ira, do you have five minutes for me, please? Oh, she thought, I don't believe it. No, actually, I don't. I have to get straight home. This was not like Ira at all. Ira, I only need your help for a second, but it's okay. It doesn't matter. Then the teacher picked up a big pile full of books that she was going to carry to her car. As the teacher was walking towards the door, two of the books fell down. And as she bent down to pick them up, 
she dropped the rest of them. All of the books were lying on the floor. Although Ira really wanted to run home and open her advent calendar, she stopped. She turned around. I'm so sorry I didn't help you. I know you just wanted a little bit of my time. I was rushing to do something else. The teacher smiled. Ira, that's okay. I'm really grateful that you've come back now and shared some of your time with me. I only need two minutes, but it would be really good if you could help me. Of course I can, she said, and she stopped and helped the teacher. When she got home, she went straight to her room and opened door number 12 of her advent calendar. Ira tucked her finger behind the door and as if by magic, she fell backwards. A force stronger than anything she had ever felt before had thrown her to her bed. She stood up again and stared at her mirror. The calendar was nowhere to be seen, but her mirror started to glitter and to sparkle. She was mesmerized by the beauty of what she was seeing. She could hear little voices, but she couldn't see anyone. The colours were spectacular, like nothing she had seen before. The green was warm and soothing. She immediately felt calm. Then she looked again, and she could see tiny little flowers on the floor of the forest that was slowly emerging out of her mirror. A path started to flow towards her, out of her mirror and towards her feet. And then she heard that beautiful again. Ira, come on, it is day number 12. Let's go and find the magic of Christmas. Suddenly, there was a wind behind her and she fell into a spiral. It was so exciting. It felt like being at the fair. She was screaming and laughing and then with one almighty bump, she landed on a bouncy mushroom. She looked at herself. Her clothes had changed. She was in the most adorable green dress with silver buttons. Her hair had matching ribbons and her shoes were so shiny she could see her own reflection in them. They were her beautiful crystal snowflake shoes. Today, Ira was so frustrated with the way her day had gone, she actually just landed in a big heap on the bouncy mushroom and just stayed lying there. A jolly voice from below soon picked her spirits up. Hey Mickey, it's nice to see you. Hello my friend Ira, it looks like you've had a bit of a stressful day. Oh Mickey, you won't believe my day, it was awful. I am so happy to be here in Nashim. Life feels easy here. That's because we always strive for harmony and balance here. Come on, let's go for a nice relaxing walk. You know, Ira, today I was wondering, as I was watching you quite stressed and frustrated, why you didn't have the time to do what you wanted. I wondered what it was that we loved the most about Christmas. Do you know what I decided it was? The food? And the presents? Ira quickly answered. No, it wasn't. It wasn't the presents, nor the food. Not even the decorations. Ira could hear a voice, a gentle humming noise. Here she comes, Ira. And right next to her was the snow angel. It's the snow angel, Ira said laughing. As the snow angel joined them, she added, No, it's not even me. My dear friend, do you know what it is that people love the most? Mickey asked. I do, the snow angel replied. 
It is the fact that they spend time with each other and they give their time to each other. It's the most precious gift we've got. In fact, together with love and time, and to be honest, time is only a form of love. It is the most precious gift that we can give to anybody. Sharing your time with somebody can make such a difference. It's really precious when you don't have it and it's very valuable if somebody shares it with you. The snow angel looked at Ira. You did a lovely thing today, Ira, helping your teacher when you were in such a hurry. I know you really didn't want to help her and you could have easily kept running. She actually thought you were already gone out of the classroom. She didn't realise you'd heard the books falling. It's really important, not just at Christmas time, but the whole year around. But it's especially important at Christmas time to take the time to slow down and to take the time to spend some time with people who maybe you don't have time to spend a lot of time with through the year. People who might be getting old, who don't have many visitors, people who may be lonely, who just need a smile and somebody to talk to. It's always good to share your time, Ira, and we were very proud to see you doing that today. It's not just all about nature and the environment, but we need harmony on this earth. We also need harmony amongst the people as well. If people can share their time and share their love and be kind to each other, then one thing is for sure. We're all going to have a very happy Christmas. The snow angel smiled sweetly at Ira and she felt very humbled. The snow angel took Ira's hand. I have a gift for you. It's a really special gift. The snow angel looked at Ira. A gift for me today, but it's not Christmas day yet. No, it's not Ira, but this gift will be very valuable for you in the run up to Christmas. It's a gift of time, a really special gift. Wow, what do I do with it? How do I use it? Well, you have to use it wisely because it isn't infinite. It will run out and if it runs out, you might start to get stressed. So what I want you to do when you get stressed in the run up to Christmas or if you find that people don't have time for you and you wish they did, I want you to put one of these sparkles on your tongue. It will soften your voice. Peace and harmony will be felt in your voice and you will have a calming effect on people around you. Remember, you're allowed to open this special box when you feel it's necessary. When you do, a couple of sparkles will come out. Each sparkle holds a little bit of time and that little bit of time will be as valuable as you wish to make it. Your voice will be calming and all will be well. It's up to you how. Valuable that time is. Nobody else, only you can decide. So use it wisely and share it wisely, but enjoy it. Ira took the box from the snow angel's hands. She was absolutely fascinated with it. It felt so light, as light as a feather. There couldn't possibly be even anything in it. She tried to open it. It was a bit hard to open. Be careful, said Mickey. If you open it, you will release some of the magic. Only use it wisely. Ira was so nosy to see what was in there. She tried to peep, but she couldn't. 
She was terrified to open the box just in case she misused it and then she thought, I'm going to plan this. I'm going to plan this carefully. I know who I'm going to give this time to. I'm going to give one of these sparkles to my mummy and then we're going to have some lovely time together this evening. Holding the box tight in her hands, Ira found herself standing in her bedroom. Still holding onto her advent calendar, she looked at the advent calendar and she looked at door number 12. She hadn't noticed the picture that was on the front of door number 12 today. She had remembered the robin, but next to the robin was a very old-fashioned watch. It was one of those that her granddad often had in his top pocket and he used to take it out to look at. It was called a pocket watch. It had a funny face to it and it also had a cover. She was sure her mummy still had it somewhere, probably in her jewellery box. She put the calendar down and she went downstairs to her mummy. She gave her mummy a big hug. Mummy, I'm sorry I stressed you this morning. Can I help you with anything? Ira's mummy looked at her and she said, Oh, Ira, that's very kind of you. You could just help me clear away these dishes and then we shall sit down on the sofa together and snuggle in. Oh, yes, mummy, I would love to do that. As they were sitting together on the sofa, watching their film, Ira snuggled into her mummy and she knew that she was sharing a little bit of glitter out of the sparkly special box from the snow angel. This was precious time that she was thoroughly enjoying and so was her mummy. Oh, what a precious and magical day 12 was. Time is a very important thing. Sometimes it can run away with us, but I like that idea of just stopping and making sure you give your precious time to somebody that you care about or maybe somebody who needs your help. I wonder, can you maybe think today, is there somebody I could give a little bit of my special time to? I also wonder, what adventure awaits Ira on day 13? I hope you've enjoyed this Shed Time story and if you want to, you can like, share, follow and subscribe to Shed Time Stories. Then you will be ready for the next story for us to share together. Bye bye. Da, 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 da.